Good morning, everyone. I'm Tommaso Colonelli, a PhD student at the University of Bologna. Uh, I would like to present to you my papers about ultra low energy consumption pest detection for smart agriculture. It is a um, uh, IoT based application scenario in which we exploit the uh, paradigm of edge computing. The application uh, is specifically designed to run in a, a smart agricultural system. Uh, basically, the structure of the um, sensor is based on a fly sticky trap which, which is useful to, to trap dangerous uh, insects like in this case the coloring motors is specifically dangerous for apples. So we have a QVGA camera with 80 kilobytes uh, images, uh, our pulp based system on chip and a multi-radio which is a transceiver uh, that support multiple uh, protocols uh, in parallel. We can support Wi-Fi, uh, Bluetooth Low Energy and Norman. So the application aims to extract the important feature for every single images, for example, the uh, sensor here, the, the um, insect here, and send remotely, for example, to the cloud, just extract extracted features and not uh, this part that is not completely useful. Let's talk about the um, platform. So we have a, a QVJ image sensor, 320 per 240 at 30 frames per second. Uh, also, we make use of uh, GAP8, which is a pulp-based MCU um, made by Green Waves, a startup. It is based by nine cores. We have a fabric controller, a standalone cores with 16 kilobytes of internal cache and the cluster, which needs about 64 kilobytes of internal cache. So just a note, we, can, we are not able to fit a single image on the internal cache, so the firmware is written to following a multi-buffering um, method between the internal volatile memory of about 500 kilobytes and the external, very slow indeed, uh, memory which uh, supports 16 megabytes. And of course, our multi-radio transceiver with the Wi-Fi connection with Wi-Fi and wireless connection in general. What about the application workflow? So we have our smart camera. The, uh, we take a raw images picture. We apply an histogram equalization using OpenCV library. That is a common library for images, images purchasing. We apply a background subtraction, which is made basically a Gaussian mixture model with a history of two and uh, five mixture, mixtures. We apply a morphological transformation. Uh, let's go in deep about the GMM. So basically we have a background model. We make it uh, using two images as a history. We, and we subtract this current frame uh, applying a foreground mask. So we can detect if something changed between previous images. Uh, what about the morphological transformation? Basically, they are used to, they are basically filters uh, used to remove an object too small to be um, an insect, so in this case it's noise, and object too, too big to be an insect. So we, this is useful to remove useless information from the images. After that, we apply a connected component library procedure, of course, from OpenCV library, which crop tiny images of about 40 by 40 pixel, uh, which includes, uh, could be include insect or other stuff like light in this case. So to discriminate dangerous in insect with useless stuff, we use a neural network, a PyTorch based one, uh, which, which uh, has a binary output, uh, and so just zero, yes or not. If we detect a dangerous inset, we compress the image with the, our JPEG uh, um, code, which is supported by Windows or Linux based uh, operating system, and uh, we stream it to the cloud. Okay, what about the neural network? I Basically, I selected this uh, neural network because it's the best trade-off between complexity and the accuracy. So we have four layers of convolutional neural networks. 
which are max pool optimization in order to decrease the memory footprint. Uh, of course, we have as an input our 40 by 40 images in black and white, or actually it's an 8-bit grayscale uh, 40 by 40 images. Uh, so four uh, convolutional la layers and four fully connected layers. The output, as I told you before, is binary. And we got uh, accuracy uh, on the training data set, which is about 2,000 images of 97% and a validation accuracy of 94%. Um, here you can see uh, the fine, uh, just an example. So we are able to recognize a dangerous insect, the cotton mod with closed fly, open fly, and multiples, multiples object in a single tiny 40 by 40, Im 40, by 40 images. Um, of course, what I just show you is running on a, a desktop platform with 32 gigabytes of RAM and an Intel i7. So the, the, most, the most important um, contribution of this paper is that we are presenting an OpenCV-based library capable to run on, uh, in this case, our GAP8, but other platforms such as uh, Cortex-M4, uh, and um, basically making an um, OpenCV-based library with a common, common uh, function, for example, an histogram equalization, the background subtraction, closing some morphological operation, quindi so closing, opening, connected components library. You can, you, here you can see the execution time on one single core, that, that could be a Cortex-M4 or a, um, our GAP8 on the fabric controller, of about 800 milliseconds. It's the same application scenario, the same framework that I showed you before. And also in parallel execution time, we can uh, decrease the whole computational time of about 600 milliseconds. Uh, we will release soon this, this uh, library uh, on GitHub as an open source, but we are still working on it. As you can see here, we, have, uh, we still have some issues with the GMM, which basically needs about 76% of the whole application time. Uh, also, we have got another issue. Basically, uh, the execution time is depending from the mixture depth. Uh, taking as a reference one mixture depth, uh, as you can see, basically we doubled the execution time with uh, five mixture depth. That sometimes is useful to, to decrease the noise from the application if we have some vibration between the sticky trap and the camera. This is mine due to the memory footprint that the GMM needs to uh, have to generate the model. Basically for each pixel, we have three bytes of history. This is the Im image uh, dimensionality. We have two, um, two pixels, so the input and the output, and the mixture depth. So just an example with step one, the model use uh, for almost 500 kilobytes of memory, which uh, on the other hand, with step five, it needs to dot four megabytes. So in, to run this um, alg algorithm, we need a lot of memory transfer between external memory, really slow external memory, with 15 cycles for each, each access, and internal non uh, volatile memory L2 and the internal cache. So uh, we are still working on it. It's not an easy task to, you know, it's not so straightforward to parallelize this code. So it will be released soon, um, a parallelized code, but it's not ready yet. What about the neural network? So basically we start from our next model from PyTorch. Uh, this model basically describe and uh, show every single step of the neural networks uh, from the structure to the uh, weights and bias in a floating point model. I made use of Nemo, is an open source tool which, which aims to minimization for PyTorch. 
to, to quantize the neural network using just eight bit weights. So after the quantization, we reach a, a, an accuracy of 55%, which is absolute, absolutely not enough in our application. After a sort of calibration and bias removing, we reach 75% of uh, accuracy. So we, we, need to, we needed to retrain the whole neural networks using just 8-bit uh, uh, numbers, so just a quantized number in terms of internal, um, internal mass and weights and bias. And uh, after that, the NEMO generates another NNX model using just integers, integers number, which, is, which uh, reach an accuracy of about 96%. What after? So we made use of uh, Dory, which is a, another open source tool uh, specifically designed for deployment oriented memory. We generate an ANSI C code uh, library, which is capable to be run on our GAP8. In this case, in specific case, we run uh, the whole neural network using just uh, two, almost 3 million cycles and 60 milliseconds. Here you can see the, um, the application. So we have the, the starting frame. We detect with the GMM and the framework that I showed you before so a different, and we encode the images and we stream it to the cloud. But you should ask to me, why you are using the OpenCV library, the really slow OpenCV library, 800 milliseconds on a single core, while your neural network is need just uh, 60 milliseconds. Because let's, uh, let's talk about, let's think about the dimensionality of input. So the OpenCV library is uh, running on the full frame, so 80 kilobytes images, uh, generating 40 by 40 images. So basically we are decreasing of about 50 times the complexity of the neural network by using the OpenCV library based. And this is why we are able to run a convolutional neural network on these tiny and constrained devices. So uh, the OpenCV library is really useful here to de decrease the complexity of the neural network. Uh, let's talk about future works. For example, we still have some issues sending uh, the images with LoRa. And we will have an example later on, but let's talk about energy. So if we think to extract the feature directly on board on the sensor using uh, GAP8, so the Palm-based platform, we, can, we need just 3 millijoules, okay? But sending each images to the server using Loravan, uh, we need 100 joule and a huge amount of energy. And also with the Wi-Fi, that is a really good uh, protocol in terms of energy per bit, we already need, we still need 20 millijoules. So this difference of energy directly affect the um, battery lifetime of the, of the system. So using the edge part, the edge computing part, we, we, we can claim that in our specific application, we can decrease the uh, of the overall battery lifetime, we can increase, of course, sorry, the overall battery lifetime of about five order of magnitude in comparison with slower. So, as I told you before, we, have, we still have some issues sending images with slower since we don't have, um, since LoRa support just tiny payload of just 50 bytes. So, uh, sometimes we, we reach, we get uh, uh, corrupted images. Um, thank you for your attention. If you have any question, please uh, send us an email and we will be happy to reply. Thank you. Bye.